Thank you. This is um, Monday, November 16th. And I just want to welcome everyone. This is the town update. I'm Andrew Goodrich on the Board of Selectmen. And I guess I just want to just let everyone know, uh, first of all, tonight, 7 o'clock at the Situate High School uh, Gymnasium is going to be the special town meeting. Uh, again, 7 o'clock tonight. Um, there'll be You'll be able to check in. There'll be enough uh, social distancing uh, when you're there, but please follow uh, the rules and the guidance when you're there. Um, just make sure and be conscious of those those folks around you if you are attending to make sure that, um, again, we're following the rules uh, of, of having proper distancing. And again, um, as we know, obviously uh, keep the mask uh, on. Uh, also tomorrow, the board uh, will be having at 6.30, also our, uh, another meeting um, so please check in on zoom uh, the link will be uh, online if you'd like to see uh, what's on our packed agenda uh, with that I want to go over to our town administrator uh, with the uh, COVID update so Jim. so the COVID numbers in situation keep going up uh, we had a tough week since last Monday we've had 22 new COVID cases reported for the town of situate uh, none on Monday four on Tuesday two on Wednesday five on both Thursday and Friday, two on Saturday, and four more on Sunday. Uh, six of these cases are from the household that has a previous positive, and then there are four other cases that are multiple cases from the same address. So um, it's not 22 brand new individual cases, but it is a lot of cases in a week. Uh, these numbers have gone up again from last week, which we thought was a high number. I think we're seeing a little bit of a, a Halloween bounce, but uh, the COVID fatigue that we've talked about where people are going out without their masks, not social distancing is really now starting to have an impact and we're seeing those numbers uh, go up. Uh, the only good news I have is we are at 1.73% positive as of Tuesday. We are doing a lot of testing in the town, which is one of the reasons we are getting these numbers. But uh, as uh, people saw in Cohasset, just a small party has a huge impact. A small party in Cohasset, now Cohasset High and Cohasset Middle School are all remote for the next two weeks because people got together and decided to not follow the rules and it has a large ramification on everything else going on. So uh, we ask you to please follow the rules, the new guidelines. You must wear a mask when you're outside, whether you're social distancing or not. Masks are required. It is a $300 fine if you're not wearing a mask. Uh, we have not written any fines for that, but if things continue, we could start. Uh, if you have a uh, gathering at your house with more than 10 people, it's a $500 fine. Uh, it's actually a $500 fine for every person over 10. Uh, so Cohasso was actually a little lenient when they only wrote a $500 fine for that house. But please, the numbers are going up. They're going up quickly. We need people to, to do what they're supposed to do, to social distance, to behave, wear your mask, wash your hands. If you're sick, stay home. And if you're a close contact, please follow the <coughs> protocols that you need to follow as a close contact. Uh, on the water picture, the water is good. Our water reservoir is up to 37.14%. We got about three quarters of an inch of rain since last week. Uh, the water through the plant was down again to 475,000 gallons, down from 522 the previous week. Uh, we are still doing the flushing program. We'll do that for a little bit longer, weather and water dependent. And a reminder, the seasonal shutoffs are going on. Those will all be contactless seasonal shutoffs. Contact the water department through the website. They will send someone out and shut the water off on the street but there will be no going into the houses and assisting residents in their houses. Uh, as Mr. Goodridge says, town meeting is tonight. We have set up all the proper COVID protocols for people to show up. I don't expect it to be very long. We have uh, 16 articles, article 13, which is the zoning article, which would have generated, I think, a lot of debate will actually be postponed because it requires an additional public hearing that we didn't have time to have. And I believe we have 10 articles on the consent agenda. So really only five articles will be before town meeting. Uh, none of those are hugely controversial in my opinion. So I don't think we'll be there very long. So please come, wear your mask, and we'll get you in and out as quickly as possible. Uh, finally, let's, let's end on a good note. Uh, Cushing Hill Road off Neilgate was paved last week. Uh, the road leads to the Cushing State Park. It's owned by the Commonwealth. It has been in a state of extreme disrepair. Um, Beirut uh, has been a word to describe the road. Uh, we've been in conversations with the state for more than 10 years to get that road fixed. Uh, thanks to Senator O'Connor and the commissioner of DCR, Jim Montgomery, they got together with us and DCR stepped up and paved the road last week. So we'll go out and take a look at it, but that should mean we'll put it on next, fall, next spring for acceptance as a public way. 
but uh, the residents now can get up and down that road without having to drive through craters the size of Alaska. I mean, that road was probably the worst road in town by far. Um, so I want to thank uh, Pat O'Connor and Jim Montgomery from DCI for getting that done for us. That's what I have for today. Great, thank you. Yeah, that road, the only time I've ever seen a pothole in a pothole. Um, <laughs> it, so that's, that is wonderful news. I do have to ask, because it has been a, uh, some controversy, the loud noise that many residents heard on Saturday. Uh, we have some confirmation, Jim, that it was a fireworks. Is that, is that true? Facebook got it right. It was aliens. Uh, no, the police and fire investigated that. They investigated uh, electrical problems. They investigated gas problems. They investigated pretty much everything they could find. Uh, it's their opinion that it was a large Jab one firework that went off that night uh, at Egypt Beach. I know it's hard to believe, but there are fireworks out there that are that big and that loud. Um, so that's what we are uh, believing that it is, and that's what we're going to tell everybody it is. I don't think it was aliens. I don't think it was um, anything nefarious. I think it was just someone shooting off a firework. Swamp gas, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, they're good. And everyone's safe. No, no injury. So hence we can joke about it. So uh, that's good. So everyone is, is safe. So with that, we'll go to the school uh, report. I don't know right. who, who will start. So. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Um, so we, the school committee also has a meeting tonight at 6 o'clock. That is via Zoom. It's a very brief meeting as well. Um, and then we will then go into town meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, along with all the other town officials. Um, and I'd like to also um, echo again what Jim said about the, the COVID precautions, um, social distancing, mask wearing. We do not want to have to shut down the schools. We've done a really good job of keeping the schools open, the kids engaged, and we'd like to continue that as long as possible. So with that, I turn it over to Superintendent Burkhead. Thank you, Ms. Lindlow. Um, for a health and wellness update, I'll start here. Just proud to report that uh, going along with, with um, School Committee Member Limblum has talked about our safe and strong reopening plan has been implemented with fidelity and continues to be our highest priority. I believe that our hybrid learning model has been highly successful to date due to our priority on following prescribed mitigation protocols, consistent communication, and cooperation with home and school. Our staff, students, and families should be commended for their efforts to date. Uh, so in, to ensure that we continue moving forward and thinking and being prepared for the eventual full return of students, which is our goal, uh, we will be reconvening our Safe and Strong Reopening Task Force Advisory Committee uh, to work in collaboration with our Medical Advisory Committee to set our course and look into the future for the return of students. Um, our school COVID case um, cases have been up, um, correlating with the town's uh, surge or, or rise, uh, according to Mr. Boudreau. Um, what we found also is there like a lot of these cases have been family cases in which four or five students in one home have had um, the test positive. Um, there has yet to be any evidence this year, I believe, of any transmission um, that's been correlated with in-school um, spread. So that's a, the good news. Um, but I will re reiterate what everyone, my colleagues here have said, that uh, it, it's becoming increasingly harder and harder the more kids that come into school with COVID or um, have cases um, to mitigate. Uh, the good news is these families were responsible and these students were, for the most part, quarantining before they were tested positive. Um, so we're, we're not infectious when they were in school. So that helps us out. We'll continue to report cases as we have them in. Uh, next, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to our school committee who continues their professional development. We had our third professional development with the Mass Association of School Committees. Last Monday, the committee worked on their goals, which should be uh, being rolled out um, on the November 30th meeting. So thank you to the school committee. Um, and then finishing up with some celebrations of students as I get to learn the schools, the towns, the teachers, and our great students. I was honored to attend two induction ceremonies this past week celebrating our students at Situate High School. On Tuesday, I enjoyed participating in the National Honor Society induction and thoroughly enjoyed speaking to the students and watching them receive their pins in person. Um, we had 100 students who were inducted, so that's a huge number. So kudos to them. A shout out to National Honor Society Advisors Sharon Moore and Andrew Roberts for organizing the event and for Seth Pfeiffer for videoing that. It is available for parents to enjoy. On Thursday, I enjoyed my first ever uh, History Honor Society induction ceremony. I have yet to be in a district that has that, so it's um, pretty Im impressive. The students were nominated by teachers for their passion and love of history. The students started by recognizing their teachers that had, had impacted their lives, and it was followed by heartfelt 
uh, induction comments by the teachers to their students. So a very positive experience. I want to give a shout out to advisor Steve Sweat and the social studies department for all their efforts in that. And finally, just a shout out to our uh, hardworking administrative assistants and secretaries. Uh, it's been a very taxing year um, with all the additional work they have to do with um, COVID and paperwork and, and they're doing it with a smile. They're doing it outstanding. They're doing outstanding work and professionalism and they're doing it with a smile. So I just want to give them all a, a credit for their hard work and just to thank them. So thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, I just, I also, I, I just want to end too uh, on just giving some thanks to um, um, all the folks over at, at the Board of Health and their willingness to engage with uh, with our residents. And again, if you have any questions, you can contact them. Uh, as a town, we should just be so we're so blessed to have them to to be so willing to um, to explain some of these very difficult topics. So again, if you have questions, you can you can contact. Um, you can contact the board and they'll be very willing. So thank you uh, to the Board of Health um, for all that you've been doing. Yeah, they can contact our office so we can put them in touch with Drew. Drew gives out his cell phone number. He'll talk to anybody. Uh, as we talked about last night, uh, last Thursday, Andrew, we don't want to put things on the website because every single case is different. Yep. So if you have a question, call the Board of Health. They will walk you through your individual case and tell you what you need to do as opposed to just try to put blanket bing, bing, bing out there and then have someone not do the right thing. So call Drew's, he, he'll be on the phone with you for an hour chatting about everything you want to chat about. Um, <laughs> but he's, uh, he's been fantastic. So call my office, call the Board of Health, we'll get you in touch with Drew. Yeah, I mean, that's what, to do those complex issues and he can just really um, simplify it for folks. It's really good. So thank you. All right, have, have a good week.